In the last video, Father Gary spoke about the preparation of the gifts and the offertory. It's almost like a symphony where there's all these moving parts, there's all these pieces that come together. This week, I'd like to kind of focus and zoom in on one part of that symphony, one collection of instruments, if you will. I thought it would be neat to offer a behind the scenes look at what the priest is doing and what the priest is praying at the altar while all this other stuff is happening in the church. So after the gifts are brought forward and the priest receives them, he brings the gifts and places them upon the altar. The very first thing that the priest will do then is he'll take the patent, the dish that has the bread in it, and he'll raise it up and he prays, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. This prayer has roots in a Jewish prayer. It recognizes that everything we have received comes first from God's hands, so that we are offering back to God what we have first received. Specifically, it mentions the fruit of the earth. That's the wheat that was taken from farms. And it speaks of the work of human hands, because that wheat was worked into bread. And we pray that it will become for us the bread of life. Jesus himself, who says in John chapter 6, I am the bread of life. Next, the deacon or priest will pour in a little bit of water in the chalice and will pray quietly. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. See, the wine here sort of represents Christ's divinity, his godness. It's rich, it's beautiful, it brings joy. Meanwhile, the water represents our humanity. And as these two elements are mixed together, we remember the fact that God in his godness and in his goodness became one of us, became a human being. The priest then will take the chalice with that little bit of water that's been mixed in, and he'll raise it above the altar and pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Again, we're offering something that we have first received. The fruit of the vine, the grapes that were taken from a vine, those grapes were then worked into the wine that we have received. And we offer it to God, praying that it will become our spiritual drink, that it will become the blood of Christ. Now, generally here at Our Lady of Lords on Sundays, we're singing while all this is happening. So the priest is saying this quietly without the microphone on under his breath. But if for whatever reason we're at a mass where these prayers are spoken out loud, the response to these prayers would be, blessed be God forever. Next, the priest does a profound bow before the altar. And he says a prayer quietly. It's always prayed quietly because this is a prayer between the priest and God himself. The priest prays, with humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. The priest is begging God to accept us and our gifts. Next, the priest goes to the side of the altar and washes his hands. And as the altar server is pouring the water over the priest's hands, the priest quietly prays, Wash me, O Lord, for my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. See, the priest isn't perfect. I'm not perfect. Even Father Gary isn't perfect. The priest isn't in this position because he's better than anybody else in the church. This prayer is a moment for the priest to recognize that he needs God's help. So the priest offers this quiet prayer, asking that God will make him worthy to act in the person of Christ. Momentarily, Christ himself will work the action of the priest to transform this bread and wine into his own body and blood. So the priest takes this moment to recognize that he himself is unworthy to step into this role. Then the priest returns to the center of the altar, faces the people, and with a gesture of invitation says, Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And at this moment, the people rise and respond, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. This is yet another prayer begging God to accept us and our sacrifice for three reasons. First, to praise and glorify God's name. Second, to help us for our good. And third, to help the entire body of Christ. God's holy church. After this follows the prayer over the offerings. And this prayer changes from week to week, just like the collect. And it ties into the Sunday that's being celebrated or the saint of the day or the particular feast. The priest prays these words out loud, but it's not just the priest praying in this moment. He's praying on the behalf of everyone in the church. It's a similar posture to the collect at the beginning of Mass, but it also sort of symbolizes the fact that all these prayers are being gathered together with the sacrifice on the altar, and they are offered to God, the Almighty Father. And as the people respond, Amen, making this prayer their own, the preparation of the gifts has officially ended, and we now move into the most important prayer of the entire Mass. 